in uh, type 1 it starts as a juvenile diabetic so if they have a family history and i think uh, if they find a diabetic usually they say once you know every year you do a sugar particularly postprandial sugar and find your normal that is euglycemia and then and the next year when you do a, a, a postprandial sugar and you find you have diabetes and that's actually the right time to diagnose that you are zero year you are starting diabetes and it takes usually five years for diabetes to manifest as a diabetic retinopathy okay. having said this in type 1 and type 2 the same thing happens but in india people think that if you have diabetes and you have diabetic retinopathy only when you have a complaint that means a visual complaint then we should go to a retina eye doctor or a retina doctor which is absolutely a myth the reason is when you have a normal vision, no symptom, still diabetes can produce diabetic uh, angiom, uh, the retinopathy. Okay. And diabetic retinopathy is a microangiopathy okay. where uh, small blood vessels of the body are affected. So it affects the kidney, brain, heart and eye too. So my recommendation as a former president of the uh, Veteran Society of India, as well as a founding member and as well as, as, well as I'm a third generation ophthalmologist, we recommend that any patient above the age of 40 should have a routine examination of the eyes, dilated fundus. That means uh, his pressure is checked and his angles of the eye are checked by an eye doctor and found that uh, the eye can be dilated and then you can uh, check the retina and make sure retina is normal or not. And if you are found as a diabetic, the WHO recommendation is once you are 5 years diabetic then you should have a periodic examination of the retina. But I recommend in India that we should do every year the time as a, when you are diagnosed as diabetes, get your eyes examined and find whether you are normal or not and keep a record and then go for a every year checkup till everything is alright. When you have the slightest changes in the retina then better to refer to a retina specialist so that all patients need not go to retina specialist. One, because of the want of retinal surgeons in the country. So every physician, general practitioner and even family doctors can examine retina. Now we have several things available where you have a fundus camera which can be portable, mobile. So it's a thorough examination with no complaint and every year we have a checkup done and you see the changes of diabetic maculopathy or retinopathy without vision complaint then we do the investigation like fluorescent angiography, OCT and then usually the retina physician, retina surgeon actually examines and then do that. So as a diabetic patient, my advice is whether type 1 or type 2, the time you are diagnosed diabetes, have a baseline examination and then periodic checkup every year unless if the problem starts, then they examine very uh, often depending on uh, how severe is the diabetic retinopathy. Doctor, what is, what is actually the cause for uh, retinopathy in diabetes? Is it blood pressure alone no, or something no. else? In diabetes, the, uh, as I told, it affects all the small blood vessels of the body. Okay. So that, uh, that's what is microangiopathy. So in kidney it happens, that's why kidney failure happens. It happens in the brain, you can have changes in the blood. So it affects the small blood vessel. And because of that, the one there's a clogging of blood vessel, there are hemorrhages on the retina, there are exudates of the retina, and then swelling of the retina, and then if still treatment is not done, new blood vessels come. And if still not treated, hemorrhages happen. And if still not treated, the hemorrhages pull the retina and produce a traction, diabetic traction retinal detachment. So hypertension adding to diabetes is an extra problem which is again, which is called a deadly combination. Which will even without uh, hypertension there will be yes, problems. Correct. Oh. Even without any other medical problem, diabetes per se produces the problem and today all over the world the highest cause of uh, preventable blindness is diabetic retinopathy. Even in the first world, United States and Europe. But many doctors, you know, diabetologists say that kidneys are more affected by diabetes than yeah, any other can be. 25% of the diabetic population are affected by eye. The problem is we don't know who is that 25%. Whether if you see 100 eye patients, who is that 25 who is going to develop retina, nobody knows. So unfortunately, you have to examine all the 100. And doctor, what about glaucoma? You are not connected to glaucoma, you are not connected to diabetic retinopathy. Only when the untreated diabetic retinopathy or complication of a treatment of a diabetic retinopathy happens, then you develop a neovascular glaucoma. That is, new blood vessel produced due to glaucoma, diabetes produces a glaucoma. That's very late. That's when you don't treat with laser, when you don't treat with the injections like Avastin or Lucentis, then they develop glaucoma. What, what are the actual treatment today available for people, diabetics, who suffer from 
uh, retina pathology? Yeah, so there are more. one thing is to investigate. Okay. So investigation is uh, taking photo of the retina, doing fundus angiography, fundus fluorescent angiography, okay. then other thing called OCT. So this will help to assess the uh, central retina and the peripheral retina, the circulation, whether there is a swelling, edema or new blood vessel. Okay. So if you do any, see a new, new blood vessel or uh, any changes on the central retina, we do a treatment called laser. And if you have a central... Before that, this uh, new blood vessel is a natural way of... No, no, no. New blood vessel is an abnormal uh, thing because of diabetes. That is why new blood vessels grow and when we have to prevent it by doing laser where we ablate the peripheral retina so that the new blood vessels regress so that the vision is maintained. If you don't treat, the new blood vessels keep growing and pull the retina and also bleed. Okay, you are talking about laser. Yes. See, so the laser is actually like a, uh, doing a sunburn where you use a powerful light where your argon laser is there, green laser is there, uh, even the red laser is there. So the idea of the laser is to ablate the peripheral retina so that the new blood vessels get regressed. Okay. And at what point does it happen that it goes beyond redemption, beyond repair? No, that is where I have specialized. Where you know, after doing laser also the next complication is vitreous hemorrhage. So that can be operated, patient can see. And the second, uh, after that also if the problem happens is which is a retinal detachment. So even that we can operate, but the prognosis keeps going uh, bad and then the uh, chances of recovery becomes bad. For, for example, if it is a simple vitreous hemorrhage, retina is not pulled, the chances of getting normal vision is almost uh, 90%. But if there is a traction detachment, very mild, still the chances are 80%. Can you just explain, because my readers and viewers are going to be diabetics. Yes. Okay. yes. Can you just tell us what is this retraction that you are talking about? The pulling effect, like this. The retina is normal, okay. and you pull the retina, the retina pulls the retina like that, and pulls the retina. The retina is like the film in the camera, where it pulls. You have a videos which is there on our website also. Okay. In eye imagination, uh, we have put it on the website. The idea is where the retina gets pulled. Okay, that is called a retraction. Ah, yes. And that cannot be repaired? It can be repaired. I told you, chances comes down. How do, if it is severe, uh, if, like moderately severe, it chances are 80%. If it is very severe, it will be 60%. If it is a total attraction detachment with also what you call as a retinal break and hemorrhage, then the chances come down to 20% and 10% like that. In the number of patients that you treat, you know, how many actually go absolutely blind? Or because of diabetes. Even before they come, there are so many patients who go blind, oh. which is uh, because they come late. So the, that is why, luckily, both eyes don't get the same, same way. Okay. So sometimes one patient loses one eye, and the other eye we treat, and we can. Till that time, the patient has perception of light, treatment is possible. The day they can't see light in that particular eye by closing the other eye, if they cannot see light, then we can't do anything. That's an irreparable stage. That's irreparable. Yeah. And what about stem cells that, you know, these days people talk about stem cell treatment yeah. for eye. Yes. Can you just tell us So the stem cell in retina is still uh, in the research. Okay. Nothing has come after the research which can be applied to the human. Okay. And second, stem cell is being used in retinal degenerative disorder, not for a metabolic disorder like diabetic retinopathy. We were talking to a few stem cell research uh, specialists and right. they were saying that nowadays what happens is you inject the, uh, the stem yes, cells yes. through IV fluids. Yes. And then no, no, here in the eye, we have to go into the eye. In the eye, that stem cells are being tried injecting into the eye. Oh, okay. So the master cells can't repair the uh, eye, eye disorder? Not from the intravenous. It cannot be done. It has to be done intravitria, intra, inside the eye. So for now, diabetic retinopathy, they are not doing at all. They are at present doing for the disease like degenerative disease like retinitis pigmentosa, Stargardt's disease, okay. that's for retina. But it's only a still a research, not a, any, not and even a... What, can, what is the promise that, you know, uh, stem cells... I think one day it will happen. One day it will happen. See, we have now artificial retina okay. where we have a chip which can be implanted inside the eye by a major surgery which Dr. Mark Kumayam from uh, US has designed which is uh, made by a company called Second Sight in US, okay. which is FDA approved and European uh, uh, e, uh, CE approved. Okay. And in India, I am I will be the first one to start there and the, uh, doing the paperwork with the Second Sight company. Okay. But that is again will helpful only in a degenerative disease like retinitis pigmentosa, which is a genetic disorder. And it cannot be helped in diabetic retinopathy because 
the chip helps only when the photoreceptor layer of the one layer of the retina is affected and beyond everything is all right but in diabetic retinopathy the deeper layer ganglion cell layer is another layer which is affected so the even the chip doesn't work there actually the chip is implanted into the eye yeah, yes okay tell us about uh, what what's your feeling about the google glass nowadays yes. they talk about implant i mean having a google contact lenses which yes. sends message to your iphone yes about the the blood sugar rather the tear sugar no, google so, camera uh, glasses is different and google uh, contact lenses is different no i'm talking about the contact lenses, uh, not about contact the glasses. lenses only about the sugar nothing else yes but uh, do you think that's a fantastic uh, i think so it's a, how practical, practical it's going to be i don't know but it definitely uh, any discovery they will have plus and minus somebody has, somebody discovers and somebody uses and somebody modifies finally i think the patient should benefit but then uh, when it comes to tear uh, sugar i'm asking you why should this yes. question is because is tear sugar related and can that be an indicator for the blood sugar no, that's right that's what they have found out That's not the but unfortunately uh-huh. that is not going to help the retinopathy. It no, only helps the sugar, sugar level. Yeah, yeah. I'm yes, not talking about retinopathy. Yeah, no, it helps the sugar level. Yes. Okay, fine. And then let me also ask you about the risks involved in uh, treating eyes. There are lots of patients who don't want to go to a retinopathy uh, treatment because they think that they might even lose their eye. Yeah. What do you have to say about that? It, it is like uh, I think it's a big myth in uh, I don't know who, who how many people you are seeing mm-hmm. because in all over particularly me. I treat maximum number of diabetics who are happy. They are regularly coming. They are more than uh, 30 years follow. Correct, correct. And, and they come to you, they are happy. But then some people have the reservation that better than going to an eye specialist and getting treated in operations, getting into the surgery mode, which can actually be wrong or probably prove to be bad. It's better, better not to go at all. What kind of message you would you like to give? Huh? I think uh, it is like uh, you, you, uh, you are like uh, any diabetic patient. If they don't want to go to a diabetologist or a general doctor, and if they need insulin, for example, 20 units three times a day, if you don't give insulin, what happens? Correct. Absolutely. Happens? No, answer my question. What happens? What happens? Very soon. No, things will come to a point that they might die. So how can you say that laser and surgery is wrong? Okay. No, how can you say I'm asking you? I'm not saying that. No, no, you asked me a question. Yeah. That the patients feel that is wrong, so they don't want to do anything. So how can the patients feel giving insulin to a patient when they require insulin three times a day and they don't take insulin? How can they say taking insulin is wrong? So the question is same. The answer is same for them. When you when you know there is no proven treatment other than laser and injection. We have injections now. Injection called uh, running with the lab. Okay. Uh, made by Novartis is called Lucentis, okay. which is helpful in diabetic macular edema. We had a major uh, symposium by Dr. Neil Bressler two days back. I wish you could have come. He gave a talk on uh, in my uh, in November uh, 27 in Hyatt. Uh, I remember I only organized in my mother's name and father's name. They were both are diabetic. My mother passed away. Today is the second uh, death anniversary. So he made an oration, a public endowment lecture, where he spoke about how diabetes is in a rampage. and how far we are in, treat, in treating or preventing blindness we are we are close but still far away that was the stop so he gave a explanation about all this so the patients who are afraid to come to a doctor is like a kid with fever is afraid to take an injection if the injection is required so i am talking about proven evidence based medicine which says that if the sugar is high you have to control and same way like i tell this to every patient taking uh, even a simple tablet like uh, glycomat or uh, or other oral and uh, hyperglycemic if the patient doesn't take you're not going to die his blood sugar is going to go high and affect various parts of the body it's going to take time same way in the eye for the eye we don't have to take tablet or insulin daily and taking a uh, diabetic treatment and this is very specific to diabetic patient going for a check up and make sure their foot their uh, neurology their heart their everything is all right and get certified every year uh, even uh, micro uh, globin urea my, uh, microglobins uh, albumin if you check and find your normal how can call it wrong so i'm saying we will find the microalbumin in the urine what you have to do you have to go to the pathologist absolutely so if the if the patient feels going to the pathologist is wrong then how can you help the patient that means i follow bhagavad gita Life business with action only. The action of a diabetic patient is he is not only praying. He has to make sure he should know what is diabetes. And diabetes is like an animal you can control, but you cannot cure. 
That is where the problem is today. There are, they are talking about surgeries and bariatric surgery or pancreas, whatever. But we still don't have an answer. If you do this, I will be out of the body. No. If they say once you diagnose, it goes to the grave. 